like last time, I'm just going to put on a light 750 watt load. You know, we'll let that run for an hour or two, change the oil, and then repeat the process again. Uh, but the next time around, we'll bump it up to 1500 watts. So we've actually been running for about three hours now. I got tied up with some stuff. So I'm taking the load off, we'll let it cool down, we'll do the first oil change and see how it looks. I think you can see the oil looks really good, you know, considering this is break-in oil and we just ran the machine for three hours. It came out really clean. So I'm going to run it for another, I would say, hour or two. You know, this time we'll double the load to 1,500 watts. So it's two hours later, no issues to report. So we'll take the load off, let it cool down, and this will be the last oil change. At this point, you know, it's ready for the full load test. And like the first oil change, oil came out nice and clean, so no concerns about the break-in oil. I'm just getting things set up, and I thought I'd just step back for a second and talk about paralleling in general. Uh, I get asked sometimes, can I parallel non-inverter generators? And the technical question is, yes, you can, but I don't recommend it. The reason for that is because you have to manually synchronize the Hertz the voltage and the sine wave. Also, the engines need to be matched. The governors need to respond the same way. You know, basically there's a lot of things you have to do right. And if anything goes wrong, they go out of sync. Current starts to flow from one machine to the other. And if you're lucky, you just trip a circuit breaker. And if you're unlucky, you destroy two perfectly good machines. So inverters, they are the way to go if you wanna double your power and do it safely. Uh, that said, though, there are situations where you could do something that may not be so safe. And 120 volt inverters are a good example of that because when you parallel them, a lot of people want to connect them to their house. And your house is expecting input in leg one and leg two. And 120 volts, you only have one leg. So you can't fully power your house. I mean, obviously the 240 circuits aren't going to work. And on the 120 circuits, only half of them will work. You know, whatever leg you feed, the other leg will be dead. So half the 120s will be dead. And that kind of leads me to the next question I get asked as well. Can I just take the one leg I have from the 120 volt generators and attach it to leg one and leg two of my breaker panel? or my transfer switch. And that, the answer is maybe. You know, to be sure you really should get an electrician in to see how your house is wired. Because there is a scenario I can think of where that would not be a good situation. And it comes to really how you wire your house. You know, if you have a separate cable with three wires each for each circuit, 
then I think that would likely be okay. You, know, you have a total of six wires, each circuit has its own neutral, uh, but there is something called a multi-wire branch circuit which uses a cable like this. Instead of six wires, there's four. You know, the main advantage to this is that you can run one cable, power two circuits, and do that safely with less wires. So it's gonna cost less, but you know, there's a couple of criteria that need to be met to do this. And one important one is that each leg is 120, sorry, 180 degrees out from each other. Meaning when one is positive 120 volts, the other one is negative. And like that, the neutral wire only sees the imbalance and the max that it can see is half the load of circuit one and circuit two. But if you feed basically the same leg into your transfer switch onto leg one and leg two, now these wires, they're not 180 degrees out, meaning they're both positive at the same time, both negative at the same time. And like that, the neutral can be overloaded by twice its rating. And that could definitely heat up and potentially burn your house down. So yeah, feeding the same leg into your breaker box, you know, don't do that lightly. Get an electrician to check it out and either say it's safe or if it's not safe, they likely can make it safe. And with that in mind, that kind of brings me to the parallel cable that I got from ERIAC. Uh, most cables that are 30 amps or less look like this. You have a ground, a neutral, and a live wire, under 20 volts only. Now, most manufacturers, ERIAC included, use cables like this for applications over 30 amps. So you can see it's a very beefy cable compared to this Yamaha one. And it's very capable of carrying the current that these machines make. But my concern is they've actually wired it so that leg one, which is the only thing that this produces, is distributed onto leg one and leg two. And that's where you can get into trouble if you connect this to your breaker panel. So I did take a look online to see what other manufacturers are doing for a scenario like this where you have two generators in parallel producing 58 amps. So I was looking for a 120 only plug, a parallel kit, and I couldn't find one in the 50 to 60 amp range. The only thing I found was a plug like this, which is a 30 amp plug, and then everyone else had a plug like this. You know, I wouldn't say that they're doing something that other manufacturers are not, but I kind of question whether it should be done by any manufacturer. Now, I am not an electrician. I know there's a lot of electricians out there who watch these videos, so maybe some of you will add to the comments, kind of giving me your opinion on this, but you know, I'm pretty sure if you have a multi-branch circuit, this type of setup could be a real danger. So anyway, enough talking. Let's get this fully hooked up. We will get the engines started and we'll see how much we can get out of these when running in parallel. All right, let's give this thing a try. I've got both machines refueled. The parallel cable is connected and I have 7,500 watts of load on standby. Now the load bank, I can't use it in this case because the load bank, it is wired for 240 volts, but using these space heaters, we can actually push it beyond what this is capable of. You know, these max out together at 7,000 watts. So the plan is just to bring on the load incrementally until we reach the max and the inverters shut down. So let's get the engine started and we'll see how much it can take.
At 3,000 watts, uh, the engines hardly even notice the load. If we weren't running in parallel, you know, we'd actually be close to the max. We remember from earlier, 3,500 watts was the tipping point. So if we turn on the third space heater on high, that's gonna bring us up to 4,500 watts, which of course we couldn't do if we didn't have the parallel cable. So let's try that. Now we're at 4,500 watts. Seems like there is no issue. So I'll give it a minute and then we'll bring the load up to 6,000 and then finally find its limit. So the engines, they're definitely working pretty hard at 6,000 watts. You know, I can feel the heat of these four space heaters from here. So yeah, pretty impressive. Now each of these technically aren't exactly 1,500 watts. You know, on high, they're actually a little bit more. So with these four on, I'm estimating actually that it's closer to 6,200 watts. Plus we have another 100 watts for that light. So that brings us to 60. 100 watts and if I turn this last space heater on low that's another 600 so that's going to put us right to the point of overload and we might actually cause a shutdown but let's try it and yeah the machine here on the left it slowed down and I can actually see that overload light blinking a little bit so if we leave it like that it's probably going to trip the inverter but it's definitely holding its own. Anyway, let's get these shut down. I will let the engines cool down, and then we'll shut it down. Well guys, that's pretty much a wrap. You know, these machines handled pretty much everything I threw at it. And as we saw earlier, the power quality was extremely good at about 1% THD. Now, the scary thing is, is that, you know, I have two Yamaha EF2000s. When I run those in parallel, they produce less power than just one of these machines. And of course, if you put two of these in parallel, you're producing a lot of power. You know, 7,000 watts, that rivals some of the larger portable generators. So, pretty impressive. Anyway, you know, if you want to find out more about these, I will leave links in the description. And I wanted to thank eReact again for sending these to us so that we could learn a little bit about them.